Hi everyone, welcome. Oh, I'm going to have to move this little tray aside that's got the cantaloupe and the cauliflower in it to make room for the bins that we're going to be feeding with this stuff today. We'll bring the bins right out here to feed them. The ones that we're working on today, well, they're right over here. They're red wiggler worms. Some of them are even the ones that we refer to as my original red wigglers, but I've been treating these two as a pair, feeding them together at the same time over the past couple feedings. The last feeding was nine days ago, and they got some carrots, they got some coffee, some potato. It wasn't a whole lot, so I'm assuming we might not even see leftovers, but we're going to get them up on the bench and get them fed. We're going to start with the older of the two systems. The only difference in what they were fed last time was that I had one lemon, and I figured I would toss it in here. And then, uh, like I said earlier, the other one that we're going to be feeding, a little bit younger, it's the original um, original worms. And maybe that's the reason that that container is a little bit larger. Maybe I was just trying to give my original worms a slightly larger space to roam around and uh, hang out in. Possibly trigger a little bit of mating and breeding behavior. This piece of newspaper looks like it was pretty recently put into this position. And I don't see anything indicating to us where we last fed. Usually I'll put down a uh, coffee filter as an indicator to show us where we last fed, but we'll have to we'll have to just sort of assume that we fed down the middle. That's kind of my typical feeding approach. And well, I just figured I would look one more time on the paper covering that was on here to see if there was possibly a coffee filter. Usually I'll just put a coffee filter out over where the last feeding was positioned. So even without the coffee filter, we've somehow managed to find our way back here. There's uh, these leaves that we put out here for them too last time. They seem like they're, they're pretty popular. And the ones that are on the uh, outer edges that might have not gotten as damp. The ones that stayed a little bit dry didn't seem to get too much attention. But a lot of the ones that were down the middle looks like they got nibbled away. So I'm going to push this stuff aside. And then I got a whole bunch of it. We just re... Um, we just refilled my box that I keep my leaves in, so we can certainly do a reload on the um, on the top covering leaves. We could just use these old leaves from the previous top covering as just bedding down in our feeding area. All right, you can see we were using leaves down here in the feeding area previously too. I can see some large chunks of newspaper in here. I ripped up a few uh, pieces of newspaper here, and I thought this one would be an interesting one to give the uh, the original worms <laughs> some spicy, spicy piece of paper. Hopefully, they like it. So, all right, let's um, let's see if we can find that lemon. That's what I'm curious about. I wonder if it's going to have that lemony smell. Usually, when you find a piece of citrus in your worm bin, there's usually plenty of citrusy scent left to go around. So unusual how it's so subdued, so, I don't know, somehow suppressed in a way. I, I can smell it, and it's quite intact still, but something about a worm bin, the way it seems to suppress the odors of things, it's just uh, amazing. I don't know what if it's a type of bacteria or something, I don't think it's anything specific that the worms are doing. So let's see, more of this newspaper. That seems to be the spot that the worms are really enjoying. I would think all those pieces of carrot and all those pieces of potato. I guess maybe some of this that we're seeing small fragments of things might be the potato peel. I think when it comes to feeding potato peel, sometimes they'll nibble off the soft bits and leave behind the peel, which eventually will also get consumed. So it looks like we've got a pretty popular feeding area down here. And we've opened up a nice big hole to put today's feeding in because we are going to go pretty generous and I figured maybe this would also be an opportunity for us to help build this bin out a little bit, see if we can help it catch up to the other system that's already teetering on being full, especially when you start opening up that bin, trying to make some room for the next feeding. It's uh, It just feels like you're almost going to overflow the thing. You'll see when we get there, when we feed that next system. So let's see, we have leftovers here. This is avocado that goes back maybe three feedings, I believe. All right, the lemon. The lemon goes back only that one feeding, back nine days. 
And I can't remember if there was any other unearthed food besides maybe some potato skins floating around out here. Some of these other large hard chunks that we spotted, these are some of the seeds from the avocado. The avocado pit, once it starts to wear down like that, it breaks pretty easily. You might have seen me trying to break another one that was not quite as worn yet. And then here we've got a piece of grape stem. Seems to be doing pretty good. All right, let's, um, okay, leftover. You know, all this bedding, all this, all this nice leafy material. So we'll take these older leaves that are nice and seasoned from being here in the bin for a while now. Include them with the feeding too. So let's, let's begin by throwing some not so fancy pieces of paper right underneath what we're going to build in here. Oh, once again, I'm using my clean hand for whatever reason. I don't know why. I just keep reaching in here with the, the hand that I should be keeping clean for operating the camera and stuff. So let's see if I can be better about doing it that way going forward. So we got a pretty good amount of stuff in here, so I just thought I would try to reach in and see if I can grab what appears to be about half and see if I can leave what appears to be about half for the other system. Let's see. Does that seem like about half? It does seem that way. I also want to keep in mind one of the pieces of info you might have noticed on that board was the worm count and it's estimated that that other bin has maybe 50% more worms in it than this one. So it's hard to say if that's accurate or not, but oh boy. <laughs> Once again, I've made more worm chow, and when I come into my first bin that I'm feeding after topping off the container, the stuff just wants to flow. So I just piled in a whole but a bunch of worm chow over there. Let's complement that with a little bit of top covering shredded paper. So two whole pieces of newspaper and a whole bunch of nice shredded paper right on top of it. Seems like a pretty nice feeding. What do you think? All that worm chow too. I got a feeling the worms are going to appreciate it. So now we get to see what else we unearthed when we excavated to see if anything else needs to get sunken down into the feeding area before we completely cover it up. And I think we've got pretty much everything. I guess before we cover up, why don't we take a peek around the edges. Sometimes I want to see how things on the outer edges are doing since we come in, typically feed down the middle, our focus is in the middle, and I just want to make sure the outer edges are doing okay. Everything feels really nice out here, nice and damp, lots of worms, lots of castings. So I think what I just mixed into it is perhaps a little bit more bedding type material just to cut the cut the stuff because it is just almost pure, purely castings out there anymore it probably doesn't hurt to incorporate a little bit of loose bedding that I'm able to salvage from the top surface down into the into the edges where it's almost all castings man look at that lots of worms hanging out down in here Yeah, there's a good bit of moisture in here. I could see it glistening on my glove. I'm not sure if it comes through on the on the video or not. So here too, it just feels like if I can throw in any sort of loose bits of leaves or bedding or whatever down into the edges, then they'll have other stuff to nibble on over there other than just their old castings. And we could level things off for the most part here. It does seem like the middle is a little bit of a bump over here. We did build it out quite nicely, so there's a little bit more stuff down the middle than there was before with all that fresh bedding. Oh yeah, but let's not forget, we wanted to do a top covering of bedding too, right? Here we go, we'll just sprinkle in a little bit. It doesn't have to be a great deal, a couple handfuls or so is usually enough just to give the whole top surface a really nice natural appearance. And I guess the same way we found it without a feeding zone indicator, we're going to be putting this system away with no feeding zone indicator. That's quite all right. I'm not going to worry about it. Whenever you don't find one, you can always kind of assume, in my bins at least, that the feeding was placed down the center. That's usually the de facto place if I'm not feeding in some sort of a special pattern or something. But we're pretty much done here in the older of the two systems. 101 days old. 
today. And now we're on to the original worms. Wow, yeah, you know, I think I might have mentioned it in the previous video too. You not only uh, see it, you know, when you look at it edge on in terms of how high in the bin it is, it's also quite heavy. Um, and that could just be, you know, a lot of moisture content, who knows. So, here we do happen to have a feeding zone indicator. How do you like that? <laughs> so, whatever. Maybe next time we come in here we'll be feeding with coffee and maybe we'll have the opportunity to include a replacement feeding zone indicator for this system as well as one for the, the other system. I don't know, I just feel like I want to evict the worms hanging out on the, these pieces of paper so they don't end up just crawling all over the place and ending up off the... Oops, like this guy right here, right? Keep them in the bin. All right, so I like the I like the way we um, collected up a lot of this seasoned material that's out here on the surface and how we incorporated it down into the feeding area. In this case, we've got a whole lot more of it. I think we were perhaps a lot more generous with this stuff last time, and I'm feeling like maybe we just have to throttle back here a little bit. I think we've already got more than enough bedding in here, so it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to keep piling it in just to force ourselves to a situation where we've run ourselves out of space in here to work. So I think maybe we're going to go a little bit easier on the application of bedding in here. Well, we'll see. We'll see what feels right. Um, one thing's for sure, though, this material is just beautiful so nice how loose it all is right above where we last fed the feeding that went into here would have been extremely similar to what we just checked in on in the other system same sort of foods with the carrot peels and with the coffee and potato peels here too i would sort of expect to find some potato peels mixed in with the bedding that the food was applied with but if you don't that's not too much of a surprise either. Sometimes they don't leave leftovers. Everything's very loose and crumbly down here and lots and lots of leftover bedding in here. When you look at a pile of this bedding too, it's got all these little worms hanging out throughout it everywhere. They really do seem to enjoy getting down into this stuff. And it's a good thing that we've got good amounts of it in here too. So if you find a little clump of it that's sort of stuck together, chances are it's not stuck together by moisture. It's stuck together by a whole bunch of worms hanging out in it. <laughs> so I think you'll probably agree with me that adding more bedding to this is unnecessary, at least at this point. I think we're going to do just fine if we go ahead and maybe just recycle the bedding that we skimmed off the top. Maybe we could just apply a little bit of replacement top cover bedding, more as just a cosmetic addition, and try to limit what we put in here. But I think we've created a large enough hole that we could proceed with giving them their food. And, oh yeah, here we go. This is where we get to give them the spicy, spicy paper. Here we go. Spicy newspaper. <laughs> wonder if the worms can taste the difference very nice very nice so uh, I'm thinking some of this going right down in here along with the fresh paper nice seasoned leaves that have been in the bin for the past nine days should really be a welcome addition to this yummy food that we're putting in here for them let's see I don't know if we did it in the same order but we can drop in some of this yummy worm chow Help it blend in some of, with some of the surrounding material. And then in can come what's left in this bag as far as cauliflower and cantaloupe. And it does seem like we did a pretty good job splitting up the portion evenly. I would almost say that we might have even given the other system a little bit more than this system got. It's hard to say. But with all this bedding in here, you know, if they run out of cantaloupe and cauliflower leaves to eat, they can always turn their attention to all these leaves, because to them, this is just as good as far as food goes in most cases. Yeah, depending on the worm type, too, they might even prefer their 
carbon-based food sources over other food sources. So here, yeah, I don't know. It's just so nice how this stuff crumbles. It makes me question whether it's perhaps a little bit too dry, but uh, I don't think it is. I don't think there's a problem with this stuff. I think it's really nice. So let's go ahead and start covering up the feeding area. I think I'd like to do so in a way that lets us also take a glimpse into the edges here too. I guess, you know, let's, let's peek in on this side first. So many castings, virtually no bedding in there anymore. Good number of worms still occupying it, but it's almost entirely castings. Yeah, that's the reason I left a good bit of this stuff here. I wanted to at least have maybe a couple handfuls of this stuff to sprinkle in and try to get some of this stuff, you know, mixed in here. I mean, the fact that it's all, you know, castings is obviously not putting the worms off. You could see plenty of worms hanging out down in this stuff. So they don't mind, but by putting in all kinds of little scraps of stuff like this for them to encounter in their travels throughout this material, it'll just give them stuff to feast on while they're over there. So we'll we'll save some of this bedding material here to blend in with the castings we find on the other side. Again, I'm assuming we're going to find a similar pretty um, castings rich batch of material out here on the edge. I guess we're not going to typically find lots of leftovers out on the edges if we're feeding in the middle. If we keep piling the new food right on top of the leftovers of the old food down the middle, the only stuff you're going to have on the edges is pretty much castings and it's probably a good idea to blend in some stuff to keep it all cozy for the worms. I mean they were obviously occupying that stuff too without any hesitation. So I don't think that any of the bin was such that the worms would be uncomfortable in it. I think the material all looks really nice. It is a little bit, I don't know, I don't want to call it dry because I don't think that's the right way to describe it. It's very crumbly and very loose. And it does seem like... Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why it feels like adding moisture wouldn't hurt. But it also seems like by not adding any, it, um, it'll be okay too. You know, So I'm just going to stick to letting it ride just the way it is. Hopefully some of those um, veggies as they thaw will bring with them a little bit of moisture. So I'm sure that those pieces of um, cauliflower, as they thaw, will probably release a little bit of moisture. Um, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Most things do, as they start to break down, kick out a little bit of moisture. And that might just help, you know, augment the, the moisture level in here a little bit. But if we, uh, if we keep getting that kind of vibe that maybe adding a little moisture wouldn't hurt either, we can always steer towards a more damp type feeding give them a whole bunch of watermelon or something or even you know stick with drier foods but supplement with water if we wanted to so that's it for today's check-in with our red wiggler worms and um, they're both doing quite nicely so let me take care of getting things here cleaned up and put away but i'm not going to waste your time with that before i go really quick let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel all right everyone have a great day thanks so much for watching Bye bye